Pathfinders, get ready for the biggest international camporee ever. Join 55,000 Pathfinders in an all-new location in Wyoming. In 2024, get ready for bigger campgrounds, more world records, special events, and incredible new activities. Join Pathfinders from all over the world and participate in daily parades, trade pins, earn honors, witness inspiring live evening programs featuring the story of Moses, and most of all, grow closer to Jesus Christ. Don't miss the 2024 International Pathfinder Camporee in Gillette, Wyoming. Lifestyle links for healthy blood pressure. High blood pressure, also called hypertension, is a serious, even deadly, global public health issue. It is the leading cause of preventable death worldwide. About 75 million Americans have high blood pressure, and another 75 million have abnormal elevated blood pressure. High blood pressure is like a silent thief. Often sufferers don't feel the symptoms of high blood pressure, but its consequences are formidable. This unwelcome invader can cause heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, disability, dementia, and early death. Major lifestyle risk factors for high blood pressure include an unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, obesity and overweight, smoking, alcohol, and caffeine. Also chronic worry, stress, and poor sleep habits. Always work closely with your healthcare team when addressing and treating high blood pressure. Let's look at the lifestyle ABCs of healthy blood pressure. A is for add plant nutrition. To increase potassium and dietary fiber, eat more plant foods at every meal. Fresh fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains. Plant foods are rich in blood pressure lowering champions such as potassium, fiber, magnesium, calcium, and antioxidants. They're naturally low in sodium. Scores of studies show that a diet high in plant nutrition lowers blood pressure and risk for heart attack and stroke. A shift toward plant nutrition has many direct and indirect benefits. A plant-based diet directly targets high blood pressure by lowering inflammation, elevating nutrient and antioxidant levels, and softening arterial walls. It helps indirectly by helping you shed extra pounds and lower stress, two factors linked to unhealthy blood pressure. Beware of processed food. Instead of burgers, fries, and sweet drinks, Try a veggie wrap, crunchy salad or bean burrito, a fresh apple and cool, refreshing water. High fat meats and dairy products, fast food, fried food, sugar and caffeine all contribute to high blood pressure. When you experience the strength that comes from good nutrition, it will help you let go of those artificial stimulants that contribute to high blood pressure, like caffeine and too much sugar. Choose daily exercise. Just a 10-minute brisk walk after each meal will rack up 30 minutes of exercise, help to lower blood pressure, and drop extra pounds. Other strategies include avoiding tobacco. Smoking or chewing tobacco causes an immediate rise in blood pressure. The chemicals in tobacco can damage the lining of your arterial walls. Exposure to secondhand smoke can also increase blood pressure. Avoid alcohol. The regular consumption of alcohol raises blood pressure. Be sure and work with your health care team to monitor changes that might be related to alcohol withdrawal. And manage stress. We can literally worry ourselves into a frenzy. So practice managing your emotions instead of letting your emotions manage you. Prioritize your schedule to avoid becoming over busy, overstretched, and about to snap. Always take time to connect. Building a network of social support is a powerful buffer against stress. 
Take time for relaxation, leisure, time in nature, and get your rest. Getting less than five hours of sleep a night can increase blood pressure. Aim for seven to eight hours of sleep each night. And so importantly, trust. Trust in God is good medicine. It's good for the heart and even better for the soul. Trust in God is more than positive thinking. It's positive faith in your Creator and Redeemer. Jesus has a personal interest in your life. He has a plan to guide and empower you through life's ups and downs. Stop the unwelcome intrusion into your good health. Instead of letting blood pressure steal your health, you can protect yourself against this unwelcome intruder by intentional healthy choices. With God's help, prayer, perseverance, and His plan, you can achieve better physical, mental, and spiritual health and lower blood pressure at the same time. Remember, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. God has provided simple tools for improving your blood pressure and avoiding much needless suffering. Jesus died to restore all that sin has broken and taken away. It's His plan for you to experience a more abundant life, a life filled with purpose, peace, and power, a healthy lifestyle to preserve your mental, physical, and spiritual health, and at last, eternal life where no thief can destroy.
Pathfinders and Adventurers. Left and right, turn. Pathfinders and Adventurers, present arms. Color guards, prepare to post the colors. Color guards, post the colors. Pathfinders, order umps. The congregation can now stand. Our code of worship be from him number 700 oh sing to the Lord a new song sing to the Lord all the earth sing to the Lord bless his name proclaim, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day declare his glory among the nations his wonders among all people for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised he is to be feared above all gods for all the gods of the peoples are idols but the Lord made the heavens, honor and majesty before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O kindreds of people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord due to, due to his name. Bring an offering and, and come unto his courts. O worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Tremble before him, O the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is also firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and let it all its fullness. Let the, field, let the field be joyful and all that's in it. Then let all the trees and the woods will rejoice before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. find us. Prayer attention. Dear Heavenly Father, thank for this day. Thank for waking us up this morning. Thank for letting us be here today. Thank for letting us all get here safe. And I hope we all enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoy the service we have for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pathfinders, attention.
Christian Church. We will now say the Adventurer Pledge and Law. Ad Pathfinders and Adventurers present arms. Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Jesus can help me We will now say the Pathfinder Pledge and Law. By the, the glory of God, I will be pure. We will now sing the adventurer song and the Pathfinder song. Pathfinder song. Opening him is I'm in the Lord's Army. Pathfinders and the congregation, you can be seated.
Good morning, church. It's a pleasure to see everybody this morning. Thank you very much for attending Pathfinder and Adventure Day at Somerset Church, and we hope and pray that you will be blessed by this worship service. Happy Sabbath. Good day to you. Today's announcements are, there will be a board meeting Sunday at 10 a.m. For those who do not have internet access, the church boardroom will be available. Adult cyber school is at 9.15 a.m. and ch children's cyber school is at 9.30 a.m. Bible study will take place this afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Super Tuesday is back on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Join us for in-person prayer meeting Wednesday at 7 p.m. here at Somerset Church. Please continue to support the HOPE initiative that has begun. The Community Service Department is celebrating its 50th anniversary jubilee. Continue to look out for the events leading up to our evangelistic push in October. Tonight there will be a fun castle social at Hamilton Church for the children. It will start at 8.15 p.m. Friday Night Lights returns on Friday, 7 p.m. at Warwick Church. The month of May is a busy month for the youth. On May 3rd and 4th, the Young Adult Weekend will be at Bermuda Institute. The theme is Stronger Together. On May 5th at 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., Somerset SDA Church will host the Mental Health First Aid Certification Training. This is the first time the certification has been offered and space is limited. The Home and School Department and Intercultural Ministries will be having an intercultural fair at Bermuda Institute on Sunday, May 5th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Somerset Church will be responsible for Jamaica. We are asking for assistance, member, for assistance from members to make dishes, provide pictures, and provide artifacts from, Bermuda, from Jamaica for display. All interested parties, please reach out to Sister Carla and Sister Lorda Rattery. Invite your friends and family to come out and support Bermuda Institute. Pathfinders will be handing out fl flyers at the end of today's service. Our adventurers will have a special place. Our adventurers will have a spe their special World Adventure Day on May 18th at Bermuda Institute. Please support our children. The 2024 Pathfinder Campery is less than three months away. We still need your help, so please consider, consider donating to Pathfinders. Every amount helps. Pathfinders will be meeting Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Pathfinders and Adventurers are still recruiting for the 2024 year. If you have a young person between the ages of 9 and 18, consider bringing them out for Pathfinders. Sunday morning is at 10 a.m. Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We also have Adventurers for children between ages 9, 4 and 9 years old. Okay. Thank you. And let me say a pleasant Sabbath morning to all present. And trust that you had a good week and you're here now to worship God. We are so happy and thankful that we have in our midst our pathfinders, the army of God in training. Let us give them endeavor to give them no support you see what i'm saying so they can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ so again on behalf of the somerset church just welcome the pathfinders and visiting friends as well i have a few announcements here and um it speaks about birthdays Ethan smith turned four year old on thursday the 11th and so we want to thank God for this life. And um, 
board members, um, you're reminded again, I'm just reminding you that board meeting tomorrow by Zoom. And for those who are not um, attached to internet, there'll be accommodation provided for you that you can be a part of it. Okay, those are just some of the announcements. So let me say this to the birthday celebrants today, our celebrants. We're just going to sing, sing the birthday song and then I'll have a prayer and get out of the way so that the part funders can continue their program, okay? So let's sing the birthday song for the celebrants today. Father, we thank you for being God, the life giver, the life sustainer, the life redeemer. Thanks for blessing Ethan with life, another year of life. We are asking you to help him to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when he comes of age, as he can share, give him grace to be witnesses for you. As we ask his prayer upon his life, provide for him, guide him, and inspire him, we pray. And be with the parents, give them support that they can in turn support him. We pray all this prayer with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Good morning, church. Oh, no. Let's try that again. Good morning, church. I'm always excited when I get to greet you in this manner and uh, my previous director um, from Southampton, Director Ray, reminded me that once you're a pathfinder, you're always a pathfinder. Um, are there any previous pathfinders, sorry not previous, are there any pathfinders? You were once an active member in the club. Then maybe you're an inactive member, but you're still a Pathfinder. If you were once a Pathfinder, I see you. I want you to stand first. All of our Pathfinders, stand. And I have to ask you all why you aren't in your uniforms. Come to us, we will order you some uniforms. For some of us, during COVID, we got a little bigger. Some of our uniforms didn't quite fit the same. We'll make sure you have your uniforms for the next one. Thank you, thank you very much for the uh, Pathfinders that have come uh, before us. Um, for those Pathfinders that have come before us, we want to say a very deep and rich thank you. Um, Campari 2024 is coming up in three months for Somerset, four months for the rest of the conference. And we wanted to represent, thus, We've begun to represent Somerset and Bermuda. As some of you may see, we have our we have our Somerset flag. This this is a reminder that these are your pathfinders. As you see on the wall, we also have, thank you, Cannon. We also have another Somerset flag as well to represent our Pathfinders. Stand it up, stand it up, stand it up. We also have our Somerset mascot.
Sorry, you can't, you can't block the vents on the mascot. Um, and we're doing all of these initiatives because we want young people to understand that uh, being a Pathfinder isn't about just getting dressed up and putting on your uniform and waking up 10 o'clock, coming to Pathfinders on time, getting honors and other things like that. It's actually how we portray the character of Christ. Christ is a God of order and we want to follow uh, his model. So we've done all these things to get everybody excited because it's a very big event. Um, there's going to be over 85,000 Pathfinders that's going to be coming out and representing the North American division. That's not worldwide, that's just the North American division. Um, so we wanted to, for today, we wanted to acknowledge that we are a worldwide Pathfinder and Adventurer Club. So, you see the Bermuda flag, but you also see the American flag, you see the Jamaican flag, Curacao is represented, uh, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, Kenya, and these are some of the countries that our Pathfinders are from. If you don't see your flag, Maybe you need to enroll in the Pathfinder Club. The flag might be downstairs. We'll have you carry it in at the next Pathfinder and Adventurer Day. Um, so I want to continue to uh, encourage you all to support your Pathfinders. I also want to thank those of you who have been supporting the Pathfinders with your funds. It has been greatly appreciated. Some of your funds, all of your funds, have helped the Pathfinders pay quite a bit. Um, and this is a very expensive campery. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. And I'm going to continue where, where Michael introduced our flags. As he mentioned, um, the Pathfinders have been in existence since 1950, and the Pathfinders have grown worldwide. And even in our own church, in our small congregation, in our own conference, we have diversity. And I'm so happy when um, Director Simmons um, said that he was going to include the flags as part of our display of our representation of our different cultures in our own community. There are about 2 million Pathfinders worldwide and 60,000 clubs worldwide. So practically anywhere in the world you go, you can find a Pathfinder club. And we are just, in Bermuda, we're just part of that, and it's amazing that um, I look forward to the day where we will be all together in our campery. And like Director Simmons mentioned, we are so thankful for the support. With that said, um, I have a small mission spotlight, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what Pathfinder is. It's not only ministry for our church kids, the kids who go to BI, the kids who grow up in church, but it's a ministry for kids that are from our community and our friends and family. I'd like to invite three friends that are from various parts of the world to come and talk a lot, a little bit about what, is, what was Pathfinders for them in their country and how did they get to know the message through the Pathfinder Club. Um, with um, Isis, please come up. Kathy, please come up. Alex, please come up. Uh, so, Isis, I understand that you grew up in Curacao. Can you tell us a little bit about growing up in Curacao and the Pathfinder Club in Curacao and um, being part of a Pathfinder Club? Yes. Good morning, everybody, and happy Sabbath. So just to give a little bit of history on how important Pathfinder is, um, my mom actually met the Seventh-day Adventist Church through the wife of the pastor in Curacao, uh, family Alferes, and she invited my mom to sewing class, cooking class, and the last thing was also Pathfinders. Back then, adventurous for me. 
And so I entered Pathfinders at nine years old at the church, and it was exciting because for us, it was really fun thing to do. Uh, we got to um, do um, visitations, we had camps, we learned different things, and my sister was five. So me at nine, her at five, I think. Um, I think Lloyd was gonna show a picture, but I'm not sure you can see it. But back then, the Pathfinders, um, we did a lot of stuff in marching and participating in the community and visiting other, other families and anybody that had in, was in need. And so from there, um, I grew more in the Pathfinder Club. And um, our Pathfinder, just like Bermuda, we are, have small churches, so we united with another Pathfinder Club and our director, uh, Mr. Engelhardt, he was excellent as well in showing us different skills when we went camping. Um, we actually had to go with nothing and create our old holes out of the dirt so we can use the bathroom. That's how much camping we did and really f trying to figure out how we can survive. So we did a lot of survival camps and I was only 12 years old. But the thing is that it was so exciting that it will invite a lot of children from the community to join. So it was not only Seventh-day Adventist children that will join the Pathfinder Club, but we had neighbors that will join. And it was exciting because every time you learn something new and it was connected with church activities. So at the end as well, while well, I continue growing, um, I really got more into it and we were trained to become also master guides. So at 14 years old, um, we went to Venezuela. That is across Curacao, it's easy to, for us back then to go. And we went to a master guide camp, and it was amazing for us because finally you could see children from all over South America and we went to, um, Brazil, the border of Brazil and Venezuela back then, which was nice and safe. And um, we even had to go and get water from the river. We had to go all the way down, bring our water back up so we can get our showers. And we were cooking and it was, it was just, even though back then it was like amazing things happening, it was exciting because when we would get together with other children, we were singing about Christ, we were witnessing, we are creating friendships. So the whole experience for me has been good to be in church and Pathfinders. The memories we created, we've been um, Dominican Republic with our club back then at home. We've been to Holland in the Netherlands. So we get to meet people from all over the world. And the main message every time that was exciting for me as a child, was like connecting with other children, knowing that Jesus Christ exists and he's coming soon. Amen. Yeah, thank you. thank you so much. Um, if you could step on this way, thank you. Um, thank you for your uh, testimony and how that impacted you. Um, and I like to say that, you know, this is a full circle. Um, I think all of us here started as young people and we're still involved in the club. Um, and now our kids are involved in the club. So it's, it's something that, it's an, a huge impact to be part of this organization. Um, Kathy, can you tell us about growing up in DR and how you became involved in the club as a young person? Good morning, Somerset Church. Can I just plug in to say congratulations to Director Simmons. I love the flags. I love this, okay? Um, I grew up in New York, and the way that I came to church was through the Pathfinder Club. Amen. That's why it's so dear to me, and I'm so passionate about it. And when I see our young children, we are pulling teeth to bring them to church, it hurts me. Because I know the potential that the club has. And it's, we all want to belong. Right? When we're growing up, it's important for children to know who are they are, where they come from. They want to do something. And so when we moved back to the Dominican Republic, my cousin, who's like my sister, she was like, oh, I'm in the Pathfinder Club. Then she got baptized. And she's like, oh my gosh, you can't eat pork. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so she started inviting me to the Pathfinder Club. And my mom was a Pentecostal. And she would struggle with us because she was seeing that we were more interested in going to the Adventist church. And um, we started going to the clubs and participating. 
and they were having a crusade. And it was a well-known um, pastor in the Hispanic community. And he came from Latin America. And do you know that my mom was the first one to baptize before us? She, she got baptized. And then my, we, gra we got baptized with my granny and my sister and I. And it wasn't because whatever, we came through the Pathfinder Club. And, and Dominican Republic is just, um, I love the fact that children that don't have, they make it to their club. You're there with or without a uniform, without your dues, but they're happy. They belong to something and that it's positive, that it's doing something for the community. Um, and they wear their uniform so proud, so they're so happy about it. And to just to be outside and doing something um, that will save lives. I remember um, we did for our spring break all the clubs. We have Alex is from the Dominican Republic, but he's from another area. So you don't even get to see all the Pathfinders. And when we get up to national is full of pathfinders. Can you believe it? Like everybody your age and you are sharing the same faith. And that's just so beautiful. This is not just about us, oh, whatever, we're going to hang out. No, it's, it's just so positive. And I wish, I wish I could just give you all my energy of how I feel about it. Um, and we went, on our, we went on an excursion. And it was only three girls allowed, but everybody was um, la cordillera al revés. And, um, and we did that, and we, it was a survival camp. I just want to say that it was very rough, okay? Um, we had to carry our pots and our tarpaulin and everything. It wasn't, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty, but it's one of those memories that I cherish to my heart, and I remember, and I still, I'm still friends with all the master guides back home, and they called me this week, and they're like, you're not coming to Camprey? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> but I love Pathfindery. I, I love the adventures. It's, it's something dear to my heart, and um, I wish it grows in Bermuda, and that you guys can also bring your friends, you know, wear your uniform proudly. You're doing something good for the community. Do you know that one time Pedro and I, and I couldn't wait for Pedro to be part of the Pathfinder Club when he was born. I was like, oh, yes. And we wore our Pathfinder and I took a taxi and he said to me, oh, you're a Pathfinder? They still exist? And I said, yeah. And just by wearing my uniform here, he realized that we still have the Pathfinders. You know, it's not about just wearing our uniform. You know, when there's a tragedy or something, remember a few years ago we had a, a, a hurricane and we were in Parsons Road and we, we were cleaning up. That's what it's about. It's not about just wearing, it's get, get dirty. It's okay, you will wash it. Your nails will get done again. You know, it's about us giving back to the community, about giving a sense that you belong to this country, your love for your flag. Um, yeah, so yeah. Thank you so much for your testimony as well. And we're we'll asked, Alex, um, of course, we can, I'm sure we can interview tons of previous Pathfinders and they'll have tons of stories to share because it is that impactful, especially as a young person. Um, not only do you learn skills that are helpful in your everyday life, cooking and sewing and things like that, but you take these memories with you for, a ve you know, for the rest of your life. Alex, I will translate for Alex. Alex, cuéntanos algo acerca de tu experiencia como conquistador. Share with us something about uh, your experience as a Pathfinder. Yo vi los conquistadores afuera de una cancha de basquetbol. Yo practicaba basquetbol. Y me interesó el uniforme de ellos. He said he saw the Pathfinders while he was playing basketball. And what piqued his interest 
It was the uniform that the kids had. Luego le pregunté que dónde asistían y me dijeron que a la iglesia está el Ventista. And they, he asked, he inquired, and they said, there, there's a club that belongs to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. La vida de los conquistadores cambió mi vida y me ayudó a crecer. También los conquistadores en República Dominicana es el ministerio que más alma ganas para Cristo allá. He said that um, this completely changed his life um, as he became part of a Pathfinder club and became a Pathfinder himself. And he said the ministry in Dominican Republic, this ministry is the ministry that brings the most souls to the church. Eh, también pude encontrar los mejores amigos que tenemos más de 30 años juntos. También me ayudó a cómo progresar en la vida y cómo tomar una carrera para bien en la sociedad. Eh, he not only established friendships for 30 years um, and on, because they grew up together in the club, but it also helped them develop as a person and as an individual and pick a profession and be somebody positive in society. Por eso doy gracias. That's why he's thankful that he's part of the club. Amen, amen. Aren't you encouraged, kids? Um, this is not just a Sunday activity. There is more to this. And I'm so glad that you are part of this organization. And I hope and pray, like many others have mentioned, once a Pathfinder, always a Pathfinder. May you be blessed. I forgot to say that um, this sash that I'm wearing has been with me since I was 14 years old. I haven't switched over, but this is how old it is. I went with it to university, I came back with it to Bermuda, and I still have my uniform. So take care of it, guys. Thank you so much. boys and girls. Today's story is called Beware the Blabbermouth. Do you guys know what a blabbermouth is? No? Gossips can't keep secrets, so never confide in blabbermouths. 
Proverbs 20, verse 19. A blabbermouth is someone who can't keep a secret. It's okay to talk about people, especially if it's positive or if you're praying for them. But when you talk about someone in a mean way or spread rumors about someone, whether they're true or not, this is called gossiping. Gossiping can be very hurtful to everyone involved. Ephesians 4, um, 29 says, do not let any unholy any unwholesomeness talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may, be, that it may benefit those who listen. When we talk about people, it should be wholesome and helpful, and it should benefit those who are listening. This is hard to do because this isn't what we see in our current culture the internet, TV shows, movies, and social media are constantly talking about other people, and it's not always positive. When you gossip or take part by listening to gossip, it can cause three unfortunate things to happen. Loss of trust, spreading of lies, and weakening of friendships. If you heard someone gossiping about their friend, you may not want to be friends with that person because you fear they might gossip about you. The more people gossip, the more chances the rumor can get wilder and less true. It is like a game of telephone. The more the rumor gets passed around, the more the truth can get buried. The worst part is that gossiping can weaken and hurt relationships. Jesus cares about the way we treat each other, and when we gossip, we are unkind, and we make it harder to have healthy friendships with others. That's because nobody trusts a blabbermouth. Would anybody like to pray? special time now. It's a special time to come to God and bring our requests to Him. If there's special requests, you're welcome to come to the front so we can pray very special for that special prayer request. We will have two prayers, one in Spanish and one in English. Amantísimo Dios que estás en los cielos, te damos gracias por un día más, por un sábado más, porque nos permite acordarnos de tu creación. Gracias Señor por los clubes, tanto de conquistadores como de aventureros, para que puedan seguir bendiciendo alma en esta vida. Gracias Señor, seguir bendiciendo esta mañana este culto. En el nombre de Jesús, amén. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for everything you do for us, for the opportunity to worship, 
for the opportunity to have our kids in church in the Pathfinder Club. Lord, you knew, you know every Pathfinder here and within our reach. Just pray for each Pathfinder and each family represented. Lord, that they will be closer to you, that the things that they learn in the club, will, they will take them the rest of their lives, and more important, that they will take you. Lord, there's a lot of prayer requests. There's a lot of burden. And we want to bring those to your feet. In a very special way, we're praying for Ms. Doss at this time. Lord, you know the situation. You know the circumstance. And you know everything. And you have everything in full control. And we just pray that you will be with the situation the best way you know how. That you will continue to bless us in this service, Lord. That you'll be with those who are mourning loved ones, who are sick and shut in, and who have a special prayer request for a job or economic or financial breakthrough. I also pray for our school, Lord, for BI, that you will be with it in a special way. Lord, we are in need of teachers, and I want to bring them, I want to bring this request to you, Lord, that you will send the right teachers to our school. Thank you, Lord, because we have a Christian school in our community. Be with all the members here, Lord, and our pastor who is away and his family in a special way. And give us a great Sabbath. In your name we pray. Amen. It's tithes and authoring time. I'm going to read a verse that's very familiar to us, Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. And it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. God has asked us to prove our faith, thanksgiving, worship, and stewardship through this one act of obedience. It enables us to prove our faith in God as our source and supply for all our needs. It enables us to prove God in our finances. God promises to open the windows of heaven, pouring out his blessings so that we will not have room enough to receive it. And he also says that we shall have no losses and be accounted as blessed by others. May the deacons come forward to collect this tithes offering. Please bow your hands for prayer. 
Father, we take you by your word and honor you by returning our tithe and love offering. You alone can meet all of our needs. You are the source of our supply. We claim your promises written in your word that you will keep and sustain us. Bless our offerings. May they be acceptable in your sight and may they be used for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. church family. Um, I'll be introducing the speaker for today. Um, he is one of my friends, someone I grew up with in Somerset Church. Um, I go to school with him, and his name's Cannon. He is the son of Carla Gibbons, and he was born on September 14th, 2008. He attends Bermuda Institute, where he is a prefect in training and grade 10 class, also the class of 2026. On his free time, he likes to read books or play PlayStation. He is also a big supporter of Arsenal Football Club in the Premier League. And he has an everlasting love for God. So I hope you enjoy the word he has for you today. Psalms 31, 22 through 24. Psalms 22, 24. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight, yet you heard my cry for mercy when I call to you for help. 
and I will read 20, verse 23 through 24. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading of his word, and may he bless Kleana. Good morning, church. Today's responsive readings will be from Numbers 13, 23 to 30. When they reached the valley of Ishkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on, on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Ishkol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community of Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There, there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is his fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities of are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites lived there in Neg Negev, the Hittites, Jubadites, and Amor Amor Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. The, then Caleb si silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. church and this is a part where we can all participate singing some of those good old favorite uh, pathfinder songs and we will begin with love is a flag flown high
Jordan Pathfinders, Adventurers, and members of the Somerset Church. Thank you for giving me the privilege to present the Word of God today. Please bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for another blessed Sabbath day. I want to ask you to use me as a vessel to speak your word to your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please turn your Bibles with me to Numbers 13, verse 30. And it reads, Then Caleb silenced, reassured, calmed the people before Moses, and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the man who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we looked the same to them. Today's message is entitled, Are You a Caleb or a Grasshopper? <laughs> Let's provide some context on what was happening during this time. Over 600,000 Israelites were delivered from captivity in Egypt. There is now dissension in the camp. Some of the leaders have been sharing their doubts with the people, and folks are nervous. The thrill of this wilderness camping experience has worn off and some are thinking that working for the Egyptians wasn't so bad. So barely two years out of Egypt, the Israelites are standing at the door of their promised land. Moses needs to motivate the people, and he selects 12 key men from each of the tribes to explore the land of abundance God has provided. The nation stands to enter into a time of great reward, but first, their leaders must bring back a report that will inspire their confidence. Here we read an account of this important official board meeting conveyed back to Moses, Aaron, and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. To live in our promised land of abundance and overflow, we must do what Joshua and Caleb did. We must try and obey, trust and obey God. We can act like the 10 spies who consider themselves grasshoppers and quit or we can develop a conqueror's mentality. I want you to come along this journey with me and you will need the following four items in your backpack to be successful in this mission. You will need the right friends, the right vision, the right mindset, and the right spirit. Number one, the right friends. Choose who you work with wisely. When the Lord told Moses to send out men to explore the land of Canaan, he told him to cho choose one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes of Israel. Included in this illustrious list was Joshua, Moses' servant, and Caleb, son of Jephuhan from the tribe of Judah. Like most of the men from the list, this is the first mention of Caleb in scripture. Why were Caleb and the other 10 chosen for this important expedition to the promised land? We're not sure. We can only assume that they, like Joshua, were known for being mighty men of valor. But as we'll see, their reputation wasn't a true representation of who they really were. I reckon that if Moses were given the chance to choose his team over again, he'd do so differently. He'd probably do it more God's way. First Samuel 16 verse seven says, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. As young people, peer pressure can be good or bad, but we must be careful. Who, we must be careful who we hang out around and work with. It's never easy to, easy to go against the crowd, especially when all our friends are going in another, another direction. If the people we know, trust, and hang out with say it can't be done, it's hard to stand up and say, you're wrong. At Kadesh Barnea, it was Joshua and Caleb against the whole nation. I'm sure the other 10 spies 
were persuasive with all their talk of walled cities and giants that made them feel like grasshoppers. We all know that fear is contagious. Who wants to enter a battle thinking there is no way you can win? That is how the Israelites felt. Besides, how could 10 men get it so totally wrong? Whom are you going to believe, the 10 or the two? If enough of, our friend, of your friends repeat a lie, pretty soon the lie begins to sound like the truth. That's how you get fake news. If it sounded perfectly reasonable and from a purely human point of view, the 10 spies must be right. Everyone was so discouraged and they felt that the odds were against them. But with the power of God, that changes the odd instantly. If God goes with you, how can you lose? Some of us are so close to the promise. However, because of the bad company that we choose to associate with, they are holding you back to what God has in store for you. Don't choose people to be a part of your team because of their worldly reputation. Do they have your best interests at heart? Are you willing to stand against them even if it means going alone and leaving them behind? That's the whole point, isn't it? When the whole nation gave into fear, Caleb and Joshua stood alone against the multitude. They were right, and the majority were dead wrong. Caleb wholeheartedly followed the Lord. For that matter, he didn't ask his friends what they were going to do or check his Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok account to see how many likes or comments were made. Caleb understood about the power of agreement with his good friend and confidant, Joshua. They truly demonstrated the word of God, which is found in Matthew 18. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. They knew that God had promised them the land, and they were getting ready to pursue their God-given right. Be careful who you are in, in agreement with. In seeking the power of agreement, you must firstly have agreement with yourself to believe that God has already given you what you need. Are you tired right now? Are you tired of going in circles? Are you stuck? Connect with the great I am. You must establish a personal relationship. You need to connect with the destiny changer. Connect with Jesus and come into agreement with his word. Put a yes in your spirit. Once you have conquered this eternal battle, you will have to deal with external influencers who may totally disagree and be against you. Listen carefully. When you are getting ready to, to pursue the promise, there will, there will be disagreement and there will be opposition. There will be blockers that will do everything in their power to go against you entering your promised land. And it will come. Your job is to fight. It's okay when you stay within the status quo. But when you want to go to a higher level and go deeper, when you want to come out among, from among them, some of your friends seem to have a problem with that. In the name of Jesus Christ, I need you to fight. Stay connected to Jesus, and don't let no boy or girl, no boo or your best mate, or a controlling spirit get in your way of blocking your blessings, because you'll never get what you truly deserve if you remain attached to what you were supposed to let go. God has given you the authority to silence the naysayers, cancel the negative assignments, and cancel the negative assignments. Caleb told the doubters, be quiet. He interrupted the agenda, he shifted the atmosphere, and looked the devil in his face and declared, I don't wish to hear another word from you. We can defeat the giants. When you continue to press through God, through, God will bless you. He will bless you right in front of the spectators, the haters, the imitators, the Hittites, Amorites, Jebusites, and the Parasites. Fight off the dream killers who don't believe or want you to possess the promised land. Are you afraid of what people think? Are you a people pleaser? Are you willing to stand alone in the midst of adversity? Speak a word. You need to decree and declare that by the power that is invested in me, I pronounce you are now blocked and defeat defeated. Go get your promise and walk in your divine plan and purpose in Jesus' name. Num number two the right vision. Do you see what God sees? Did you know that, that the vision of grasshoppers is different from that of human beings? They are equipped with five eyes in total, three of which are simple eyes and two of which are compound. The sizable compound eyes are situated on the sides of their heads, while the others are directly between them. When their eyes are merged together, they see bigger than what it really is. No matter, no wonder the 10 spies are filled with fear. When there is limited seeing, this produces limited abilities. 
that gives limited results. Joshua and Caleb's eyesight and vision was based on God and his promise, not on what they could do or see with their natural eyes. God had promised them the land, and they trusted him. And because of their faith in him, Joshua and Caleb possessed what he had promised. In the same way, our attitude today must be based on God and what he has said, not on what we can see. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. If we don't see situations through the eyes of God, it causes us to lose proper perspective by comparing ourselves with others. The spies were intimidated by the Canaanites. Numbers 13 verse 32 says, they said they were giants. They thought they were a devouring people who would destroy them in battle. When we compare ourselves with others, we typically fall into one of two ditches. We either think too highly of ourselves by finding others we judge less than ourselves, or we think too lowly of ourselves by finding others we judge higher than ourselves. In 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12, Paul admonished us to not give into this faith foolish behavior of comparing others, ourselves with others. Young pe as young people, we need to seek our primary validation from God. The 10 spies led Israel into 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and the passing of their entire generation because they inaccurately compared themselves with others. In truth, they rejected God's view of them, choosing rather to faithlessly compare themselves with God's enemies. The Israelites must have had a cataracts and their visions was blurry. Spotted patches and partial blindness. All 12 spies saw the same thing, but why the two completely opposite? All 12 experienced slavery under the Egyptians, and all 12 witnessed the awesome power and faithfulness of God bringing them out of Egypt. Yet only two believed they were well able to overcome. The grasshopper mentality will allow that what is bigger to become irrationally bigger. Nevertheless, our God is bigger, greater, and stronger. So be careful with your eyesight. Protect your vision. Some of you need to make an eye appointment effective immediately. <laughs> what smart lenses, binoculars, or contact lenses are you currently wearing? I suggest you get rid of them really fast. Your God is bigger than any enemy. Ask God to open your eyes with supernatural vision so that you can see your victory through the eyes of the Lord. Pray for clarity for 2020 vision and pray that God will reveal what is best for you because I know for myself that God is a revealer of truth. Remember this, grasshoppers saw calories and cholesterol. Caleb saw milk and honey. Grasshoppers brought, brought back gripes. Caleb saw delicious grapes. Grasshoppers saw defeat. Caleb saw victory. Grasshoppers saw darkness. Caleb saw light at the end of the tunnel. Grasshoppers saw giants and problems. Caleb saw promises. Shift your focus from the giants. Shift your focus on the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. A lack of vision, a lack of understanding of how God truly sees you is a sure way to keep you wandering around your promised land instead of taking possession. I am sure the Israelites shouted to Caleb, man, are you crazy? Are you blind? Did you not see what we saw? The people are stronger than we are. They're huge. We look like grasshoppers compared to them. Alternatively, to put it in another way, your lack of vision may look something like this, but I don't have a college degree. I'm too young for that now. No one will give me a chance. I am not pretty enough. No one will like me. When you're going up to possess your promised land, you've got to believe you're going to see it. Begin to see yourself present possessing it. See yourself living in it. Close your eyes and spread time picturing yourself walking that land. Declare it over yourself. In order to make it through your journey, you need spiritual sight. Supernatural, vi supernatural vision is the ability to see God's presence, to perceive God's power, to focus on God's plan in spite of the obstacles. This vision is the ability to see beyond the majority. What is God's vision of you? I want to encourage you to today, open your eyes, open your mouth, and start speaking boldly. Repeat after me, pathfinders and adventurers. I am acceptable. I am, acceptable. I am valuable. I am, valuable. I am lovable. 
I am an overcomer. I am forgivable. I am capable. Start affirming those words, those words every day. You take them with you to school, work, or wherever. You start to memorize and then eternalize those truths because that's what God sees when he looks at you. Number three, the right mindset. The spirit of the grasshopper reacted with fear and not faith. In our text, the spies didn't, didn't only make a judgment about themselves. They also made a jump judgment about what the Canaanites thought about them. Somehow, they got it into their thick heads that the Canaanites thought they were like grasshoppers. It makes you wonder if they asked the Canaanites, what do you think of us? I highly doubt they took opinion polls as they were sp spying out the land. Actually, we find out later from Rahab in Joshua 2, 8 to 11, while she was, she was hiding future spies, that in fact, the Canaanites greatly feared the Israelites. They made a huge mistake, mistake all because of the false assumption they made, which was actually completely wrong. Young people, how many times do we do the same thing? We assume someone doesn't like us, says something about us, or is about to, out to get us. However, often we are completely wrong. You see, when are, when are you thinking, when, you see when our thinking is based on a faulty perspective, what we believe others think is also tainted. We need to have a shift in our mindset. You see, the grasshoppers brought back a negative report fostered by fear. Only Caleb gave a positive report fueled by faith. As preachers like to say, faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Fear will paralyze you, but faith will energize you. Caleb focused on the opportunities while others focused on the opposition. Caleb had the right mindset and con a conqueror mentality. Pathfinders and adventurers, I don't know what challenges you may be facing today, but take heart, God is with you. Put a praise on his promises. If God be for you, who can be against you? Greater is he that is in you that, than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. They may form, but it will not prosper. You can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. You are an overcomer, and because God is victorious, I can also be victorious. God has given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Shout in your spirit that the God that I serve is more than able. There is nothing too hard for my God. Caleb was not afraid of giants. Yes, they were tall. Yes, they were strong. But Caleb was not afraid of them. For his God was bigger. Bigger than COVID. Bigger than any disease. Bigger than anything that we may face. When you are focused on God, you will not fear anyone. When you focus on your problems, you will have all kinds of fear. Pathfinders and adventurers, in order to get to your promised land, there will be giants that you will have to face. And I'm not here to tell you that it will be easy. Your thoughts are going to fight against you. Impossibility is going to stare you in the face, taunting you. These giants will do everything in their power to get you off course, to distract you, to sabotage you, to hurt you, to try and destroy you. But if you have the right mindset, and with God on your side, being with you every step of the way, the promise is achievable. The promise is just behind the corner. The promise is almost within your reach. So don't give up. Young people, what are the obstacles that we, we are currently facing? What giants are getting in our way? Whatever our God-given promised land is, know this. Only we can keep ourselves from reaching it. Nothing nor no one can prevent us from living in the abundant life. Let's ask God to transform our minds, no matter how we feel or what it, it looks like. Say, I'm, gonna, I'm going for it. I am well able to overcome any obstacle. The, prom the promised land is mine. If you have been wandering with, without gaining entry into your promised land, without seeing your great change, ask yourself what you've been thinking, saying, and doing. When it looks like your promised land is nowhere to be found, think, speak, act. Think like it's already yours. Speak like it's already yours. Act like it's already yours. Because it is, God's already given it to you. It's not about your present circumstances. 
not about your past, not about your background, not about your family history, not about your education. It's about the promise. It's about the covenant that God has made with you. If your name is on the promise, go get it. It belongs to you. Claim it, believe it, and you shall receive it. Are you a Caleb or a grasshopper? These grasshoppers should have been ashamed of themselves for doubting God. And as a direct res result of their negative mindset and disobedience, they experienced a major U-turn, which lets on, led them on a spiritual treadmill that had them wandering aimlessly in the desert for 40 years, representing the 40 days that the spies went out to scout the land. Young people, just imagine an entire generation was not permitted to reach their God-ordained promised land because they got in the way. You would think walking through the Red Sea would be enough to trust God that he would bring victory. You would think watching the water at Mara turn from bitter to sweet will convince them, not to mention manna from heaven and the quail to eat, eat every day. How about the water coming out of the rock that Moses hit, or the Ten Commandments received by Moses on Mount Sinai, or even the cloud by day that they followed and the pillars of fire by night? Caleb remembered. Last important tool that you'll need to possess for this journey is the right spirit. Numbers 14, 24 says, but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. Caleb was different. Caleb had the right spirit. If God said, take the land, Caleb said, grab your swords, men. It's time to go to war. He didn't let anything or anyone distract him from God's will. He, will, he was willing to fight the opposition. He didn't quit. He resisted the fear. He resisted the doubters. He resisted the mur murmuring and complaining. I have come by to encourage you, pathfinders and adventurers, to remember the word of God and to stand on his promises concerning you. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. A grasshopper spirit was, look how big those giants are compared to us. A Caleb spirit is, look how small they are compared to God. A grasshopper spirit is, they are too big for us to fight. A Caleb spirit is, they are too big to miss. When the majority of the Israelites wanted to go backward to Egypt, Caleb wanted to go forward to Canaan. Numbers 14, 8 reads, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land, this land and give it, to it, give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Many people live in the past and as a result, forfeit their future. We can learn from the past, but we can't live there. Neither can we change the past. No wonder Paul wrote, in, no wonder Paul wrote forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal up to the prize of the high calling of God in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. You can't drive a car very well staring into the rearview mirror. If you do, you will certainly run off the road and crash. We must look ahead, put our foot on the gas and our hands on the steering wheel, and keep moving forward. God has greater things in store for us, but we must stop looking backward and, like Caleb, start looking forward. When they were negative, Caleb was positive. When they were doubtful, he believed. When they were hesitant, he was ready. When they were discouraging, he was encouraging. When they were fearful, he was courageous. We need more Christians like a, with a spirit like Caleb. Don't fall in the trap like, to, like the Israelites who were always complaining. It'll get you nowhere and complaining puts you in a powerless position. Maybe, you're even, maybe you've even complained about God. Why did those people get blessed? Why am I still waiting? Or maybe I've been tithing, but I don't see any blessings. Every time you complain, you go around in a circle and keep yourself from the great change you so desire. If you want to get off the 40-year plan and possess your f promised land, fight the complaining with everything in you. Stop procrastinating and step out of your comfort zone. Maybe you need to start the chapter of your new book. Make the call. Submit the resume. Create the website. Pick your university of choice. Do that one thing you haven't done yet. Take that bold step. The kind of spirit Caleb had is greatly needed in every generation. It is needed now in this generation. We call forth the spirit of Caleb in Jesus' name. 
In closing, today you stand at the border of your potential, at the place called Kadesh. Remember that you are the Caleb generation. I speak and call forth Caleb's today who will possess the right friends, the right vision, right mindset, and the right spirit. We break and reject the grasshopper spirit in the name of Jesus. What are you today, pathfinders and adventurers? Are you a Caleb or a grasshopper? Remember that Caleb was not intimidated by his enemies. Caleb was not moved by his circumstances. Caleb focused on the greatness of God. Caleb focused on what he would enjoy once he entered the promised land. Today, you stand at a place of decision. How essential that you look at your future through the eyes of faith, not with the eyes of fear. God is with you and has so much in store for you. Caleb was on fire for God. He was courageous, just like you. How do you become courageous? The same way you become strong, by reading, speaking, and acting on the word of God. For some of you, by accepting Jesus into your heart today, he will save you and he will be your best friend. Young people, moving into your promised land means you might have to fight some giants, but you are not alone. God doesn't want you successful in some things. He wants you successful, successful in everything you do. Let go of your familiar. You have held onto your past for too long. You have to change the way you've been thinking. You have to change the friends you have been keeping. You have to change the way you have been looking. You have to change the way you've been going. Don't stay at Kadesh for too long. So I will ask this once again, Somerset Church, Pathfinders and Adventurers. Are you a Caleb or a grasshopper? Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen, Cannon. Somerset, you have a preacher. Amen. That, that sermon made me clean my glasses, Cannon. That's a good sermon. That's a good sermon. If, if you miss coming to Somerset Church today, you missed a treat. Thank you very much, Cannon, for that word. That was a good word and a good reminder for us as pathfinders and adventurers, as members of the church, even if you're a visitor and you can hear these words, that's why we do what we do. Let's keep focused. Thank you so much. I also want to thank uh, Work Church and Devonshire Church as well um, for coming out and supporting. We know it was a long drive. Thank you all very much. We do have lunch downstairs. So please stick around. There's plenty of food. Thank you so much. Our closing hymn is We Are Soldiers. Please stand for our closing hymn.
Afternoon Church, Pathfinders and Adventures Attention, Pathfinders and Adventures Prayer Attention. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Please bless the food and those that provided and provided for it. And please guide and protect us throughout this week. And remember that we should either be a Caleb or a grasshopper. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord causes his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace. Now may the God of peace who brought you up, our Lord Jesus from the dead, that shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work you do, his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pathfinders and Adventures, attention. Prepare to retrieve the columns. 